chances are you've seen the uh, news about the release candidate for Gyroflow 1.0 coming out. And uh, there's been lots of hype about this. And, and personally, I'm very excited for it. And the reason I'm very excited for it is because I make use of the Insta360 GO 2 and the Cadex Peanut uh, when I'm flying my aircraft. And they have their own, of course, they have their own stabilization tools. Insta360 uh, Studio allows you to stabilize the footage. And uh, um, that's all well and good. But the problem I find is that the Insta360 GO Studio is just not, just doesn't give you the options or the controls that I would like. I find that it's over stabilizes the footage. And when you're flying low level in a fixed wing aircraft, uh, it takes away some of the feel uh, of the flying when you're, when you're actually operating. So, um, just why I'm not a huge, huge fan of it. You get pretty limited options. You can control whether you have stabilization on or off, or you can uh, change between, they call it flow state and FPV stabilization here on the uh, desktop app. Flow state is basically just horizon lock and FPV stabilization is the same stabilization just without the horizon lock. Beyond that, you only have the field of view settings, some audio settings, uh, field of view, you've got a couple different options. Most of the time, uh, I use either ultra wide or action view. Action view is essentially the uh, like the GoPro Super View, fairly fairly similar. So it squashes a little bit more on the outside of the frame. Um, but anyway, that's the only options you get. That's the only controls you have over this. You can't control the level of stabilization, how aggressive it is. Uh, and so, as I said, I find it overly stabilized. So it'll be flying along and it will, um, it'll hide some of the banks and movements of the aircraft and create some of that weird sensation as you can sometimes see the, uh, the lens protector uh, can be observed around, around the image uh, as it tries to really aggressively um, keep that image stable. Great for some things, um, but not when you want to just capture how a fixed wing airplane flies uh, while smoothing out kind of the rough, the rough edges. Because if you look at it unstabilized, it's just not as as uh, relaxed or as uh, as nice of a video. The the stabilization does help um, kind of improve the video a lot. But I don't want it overly stabilized. So in comes gyro flow, and now we have some really cool stuff. So we suddenly have a lot of options and a lot of controls. So starting over here on the rotation, I'm just going to set this right for the video that I shot in any degree. I find that the uh, go under lens profile, if you type in go to the first one you see here, the 2.5 K uh, matches up with the actual frame rate that the go to is giving us. And that seems to, to give us a really good image. Uh, the motion data is built into the file when you use the uh, the go to or the peanut, so you don't have to do any any uh, com a complexity like that. And then I found just for myself, personal preference, 0 0.5 on the FOV, the field of view, uh, seems to be a good a good balance. And then I, I've been liking the velocity dampen per axis, but you can also just do the general velocity. I like the velocity dampen per axis um, when I was playing with the original gyro or the earlier gyro flow. Sometimes you want a different level of stabilization on each axis. For the uh, output size, I've so far I've been leaving it the full frame and just cropping it in the uh, video editing software. So I leave it as the, the square image. But otherwise, if you want to um, shrink it down, you can. Um, you can either uh, set it to uh, the resolution, you'd have to set it down to like a 2K or a 2.5K uh, resolution. Um, but I'm going to kind of capture the maximum frame here. So if I look at this, it would be So 
So just doing a little bit of math, it would be 1512, I believe, for a uh, 16, 16 by 9 uh, aspect ratio. So there should look something like that. And now when we play it, we get a chance to, uh, to see what that looks like. And it does a great job on the preview. Um, so you can play with a lot of the settings and see what it's actually going to look like. So if we just from a simplified process here, if we uh, really up the, the roll smoothness here, we can see, we can see what kind of effect that's going to have. And the main reason I like this over the Insta360 Studio is if you're flying fixed wing low level to ground and you know you make a sharp correction because you're you know you're approaching some trees and you're trying to fit in through the middle of them or something like that you can make an aggressive sharp bank and then roll back level for example and you'll see it if you can see the shadow of the airplane you can see the shadow of the airplane move but the airplane the view that the insta360 go uh the insta360 studio gives you because it's overly stabilizing that footage, you don't actually see the aircraft bank in, in the field of view that you're looking at. And so I kind of, I, I really don't like that. I want something that just takes out some of the shakes without uh, having to lose the entire, entire feel of flying. Right now, the only kind of major weakness I found with the uh, Gyroflow 1.0 is on the Mac. It is very, very slow uh, for exporting. So I uh, hope they will find a solution for that uh, on Windows. It's very fast, probably faster than the uh, Insta360 Studio. Um, but on Mac, unfortunately, it is uh, really slow. Uh, I'll show you what uh, kind of looks like when it's uh, uh, just a comparison between non-stabilized, stabilized here in Gyroflow, or stabilized in the Insta360 Studio. All right, so starting off, we've got the unstabilized footage. I'm uh, chasing Romulus FPV in his uh, Zod Dart 250 with my own Zod Dart 250. You can see we're getting bumped around a little bit. It's, it's fairly calm out there, but these little wings, they do get bumped around fairly easily. But what I want you to watch is this section here. You can see we're making some sharp, aggressive turns, trying to uh, keep them in the frame. And uh, we'll just see how those uh, stand up to uh, stabilization. So this next shot is from the Insta360 Studio. And you'll see right here, there's that weird little jerk when the airplane kind of makes the turn from downwind to uh, kind of coming around for the upwind flight here. And uh, that's something I notice that, that, that you see quite commonly on the, on the 360 uh, output. So here we can see we're gonna be making those sharp turns. You can see the edges of the lens protector coming into play there as the uh, stabilization software makes aggressive corrections for the movements of the aircraft. And now here's gyro flow. And you'll notice here that first section where the airplane did that sharp kind of weird looking jerk, it, I felt it looked much more natural with the way that gyro flow handled the stabilization. And then as we come into the turn here, we're gonna see we're still making those sharp turns and they are somewhat softened in gyro flow too, but they're not as softened uh, as they are in the 360 Studio. We'll just run that section again here, looking at them side by side, just so we can see how they compare. You can see how much softer the uh, Insta360 Studio is and how it both leads and lags uh, any actual turn the plane makes. And here's just another shot for comparison. You can kind of see how the two different stabilization software works versus what actually was happening on the aircraft. And the nice thing again about gyro flow is if you didn't like what you got out of it, you can go back and tweak or tune some of those settings. Whereas with Insta360 Studio, you're just left with, uh, with what you get. So overall, I'm much happier, happier with the stabilization that I'm getting out of Gyroflow. Anyway, hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, here I was, uh, I sometimes switch between flying with lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries, and 
happened to be flying with a lithium polymer battery and didn't notice the voltage was dropping down into a pretty low uh, level. And anyway, by the time I finally realized I was in trouble and made the turn to home, we were in uh, fairly desperate straits as far as, uh, as far as battery went. I was desperately trying to make it over the fence, but as you can hear on that motor, the voltage just finally sagged too low and we just did not have enough energy to make it over the fence. Anyway, no issues with that. We swapped out some batteries and took off again. And uh, here's uh, my friend Romulus FPV chasing me, so now I'm in the front. And you can see the plane flying along there. I just redid the, uh, the paint and the vinyl on this plane after clipping the power lines on our last flight, or our last uh, flying session together. And I thought the plane was looking pretty good. But then I decided that it would be okay. Watch the center of your screen there. There you go. So the LED you can kind of see there. I decided uh, while flying inverted to switch from acro to manual, which uh, turned out wasn't a very smart uh, move. So yeah, don't switch flight modes while inverted. I'll get it put back together. Uh, luckily nothing major seems to have been damaged and uh, be back flying again soon, I hope.